What is up, my dashing dudes? I am the Hans TV, and don't y'all just love it whenever there's a crossover between subreddits? Well, that's what's happening today in our next episode of r slash Tales from the Front Desk. Our first post for the day comes from Tim Travel 77 Impossible guest finally told off by manager slash owner. It's ski season, and every weekend the same guest checks in for two nights. Same routine. She is a tiny person but sounds like she stomps everywhere. She talks at a volume just under yelling. She gets flustered about waiting in line because she's here all the time and she should get priority. She should pay less because she's on a special diet. So she can't eat at the breakfast buffet. She comes to our small lobby to stretch and do sit-ups in the morning. Then a long story about her being a personal trainer in the neighboring town more complaints about the ski shop next door. It's the same weird Groundhog Day routine every weekend. So three weeks ago, she checked in. She did her normal song and dance and then asked to see the weather slash snow report. I gave her a copy and she went to her room. The next morning, she came down raging about how I lied to her about the snow. I told her that we don't predict snowfall, that we just hand out pamphlets. She screamed for a little about how she was going to report me for false advertising, and left. She comes back into the hotel a few times, looking around and leaving, then storms up to the desks and says, what time do the local stores open? Uh, everything starts opening at 7 a.m. I list the places that open at 7. That's late. No wonder everyone here is so fat. They are lazy. I just go back to reading off the rest of the places. No, that's it. That's why you were all so f***ing fat. You lay in bed all day. I work two jobs. I haven't lay in bed all day in 20 years. My boss, who was around the corner starting the coffee pot, said, You know, I think I'm tired of your bullshit. Every one of my people have treated you kind, but you always come up with some shit to say. Why don't you just leave? Bullshit? I could practically own this hotel with how much I spent here. Well, you don't, and you're about as graceful as a water buffalo. I can hear you stomping from my office and your mouth from the street corner. I demand the owner's number. He's going to hear about your crass behavior. I am the owner, slaps his card onto the counter. Make sure you leave a review on our website. I'll frame it and put it up on my desk. He told me later that he struggled with his weight his whole life, and that was the camel that broke the straw's back. Karens are the best, aren't they? Just the best. Our next post comes from the Magic Struggle Bus, the saga of a pathological liar, Susan. Hello fellow Redditors, I have come to Tales from the Front Desk to turn in my night audit squad merch and hotel name tag. As of December 28th, I am leaving the hotel industry to pursue my lifelong dream of being a life bringer and a diaper changer. Chubby Bubby should be arriving here in the next month. And that means I am taking a well-deserved break from adult complaints in order to recover some of my sanity before I start taking baby complaints for a bit. I have been in the hotel industry for about four years, although it feels like an eternity. And I thought that as a way to relieve myself, I will impart some of my insane stories onto the world so I may go in peace. I started out this journey as a front desk peon to front office manager to briefly general manager and concluding my journey as a night auditor for the last year in a different property. It has been a long, treacherous journey filled with many memories, like a DEA bust, a few ODs, properly insane guests, and my favorite guest who warmed my frozen customer service heart over Thanksgiving 2017. My mind is heavy with many tales, but I feel one more strongly than all the others. Today, I will attempt to tell you the story of what I consider to be the most unstable woman I have ever had the displeasure of meeting, whom I will call Pathological Liar Susan, or PLS. The story is incredibly long, and if I want to tell it all, it will need to be in multiple posts. I could honestly write an entire novel on this woman. So in the interest of time, I will start by telling you the rise of how we found out that PLS is an insane liar. In order to better explain the long and convoluted story of her month-long stay here, for the first two weeks of her stay, PLS was more of a nuisance than anything outlandish. We actually did not interact with her much for the first two weeks of her stay beyond a nightly ritual of begging for breakfast foods for her sick mother, which is a whole story in itself. In fact, most of us just thought she may have had a few screws loose. 
but she was overall harmless. Every night auditor has probably had a guest that was just a little too lonely and a little too chatty, and would often take up the entire night telling their life story. PLS was one of mine. At first, she was an innocent chatty Kathy. Before we realized she was a complete and utter liar though, I thought she was a wealthy woman who was just down on her luck. She told me all about how she was a local socialite and knew all of the town's big players. Heck, she even babysat for some of them. She told me stories all about her husband and how great of a man he is. She told me how much he did for our community. He sounded amazing and I told her I couldn't wait to meet him. I had assumed the man's name on the reservation was him. I did not know that her brother had booked the room. And he was here looking after their sick mother with her. We typically get a lot of guests who have been sent here from insurance companies because their home had caught fire or had flooded. I'll admit it, I can be a little naive. Okay, really naive. I had no reason to believe she was lying to me about anything at this time. She talked like he was alive, well and kicking. But things soon started to take a weird turn over the nights that I worked. It started out with her asking deeply personal questions about my life which I would often respond with the usual customer service dismissive laughter or discomfort and give purposefully vague answers. She wanted to know where I live. If my then fiance had ever abused me, my birthday, my legal name? She even asked me if I could score her marijuana edibles for her sick mother. I did my best customer service dodge rolls, but she snagged me on the one topic that was a sore subject at the time children. You see, when PLS had finally breached her room after two weeks with us, I was approaching the due date of my first child, whom I unfortunately lost early on in my pregnancy. Seeing as my lifelong dream is to be a mom, I was devastated. The closer the due date got, the more depressed I was. PLS had found her way to dig into my tough customer service shell and bring out the fleshy human mess beneath. I tried not to cry as I told her that I had no children yet, and she latched on like an emotional vampire. I see. I will pray for you. Over the next few weeks, she would tell me all sorts of weird and strange things that could help me get pregnant, and she would remind me daily that she was praying for me. I have never, ever felt so shitty and powerless when it came to someone just talking words to me. Grief can be strange, and it's hard to tell people that sometimes all you want is to not talk about it. As time went on and we learned more about PLS's instability, however, these well-meaning sentiments became more and more disturbing to me, which will become evident in a future story. After a few days of her talking constantly to me, the night auditor on my off day and the afternoon desk staff, we began to learn that this socialite down on her luck was actually an insane liar and we possibly would have never known that all that came out of her mouth was horse crap until she spilled the beans about the bar she apparently owned. Back in my early front desk peon days, I met my GM while she was working at another property and started my first telltale job. I became her FDM after a few months and she began to mentor me. After my property was sold to another management company, I parted ways with my mentor as she was the district lead for her old company and I became a GM briefly for the new one. This property had a bar next door, a bar that we swear laced their chicken tenders with crack and fried their fries in heaven's gold. We would take turns ordering food and picking it up to eat from there. We knew the management well, including the owners. We held a soft deal with them for a food discount if we ordered drunk patrons discounts on rooms. We knew this bar and it was our favorite place to eat. Well, after I quit my job with the new management company and took a vacation in retail land for a minute until some health issues wouldn't allow me to physically work in retail, I reached out to my mentor and she helped me get my current night auditor position. She is now the temporary GM of our property, though she has been for several, several months at this point. So imagine her surprise when PLS was brought back to the hotel in a squad car, with PLS screaming about how unfair it was she got kicked out of our favorite bar. The officers escorted her in, and clearly intoxicated PLS plopped down at the desk and began telling my mentor slash GM all about how PLS was the owner of said bar, and that they had banned her for life because she drank too much. After the GM talked with PLS for a while and sent her off to her room, GM talked with my front desk manager, who had overheard the conversation, all about our history with that bar and how she knew the owners, and PLS 
wasn't one of them in the slightest. When I came in later that night, FDM was so excited to tell me the latest tea about PLS, he begins to tell me all about how she was kicked out of the bar and that she claimed she was the current owner, but that they must not have known because her husband died. Wait, 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 what? Her husband is dead? I start telling him all about how for the past few days, PLS would talk to me non-stop about her husband as if he was very much alive. Nope. PLS had told GM that he had been dead for years. I was baffled. She had been talking to me for a few days at this point about her husband, as if he was in the room down the hall. FDM and I talked for a long time about all the things I had heard from PLS, and we realized that this woman was so full of shit, she could be a waste processing plant. The more I started telling him about what stories she had told me, my naivety had been broken. I mean, I probably should have realized how full of crap PLS was when she told me she was personal friends with our country's infamous education department head, and that PLS's children were friends with Mrs. Bears in Classrooms kids. I googled her deceased husband's name and found out that he was just a local tile man. Her abundance of money was and still is a complete mystery. I later found out from PLS that she was kicked out of the bar because her friend had supposedly given her cocaine without her knowing, while her friend was playing pool with PLS's new boyfriend. This is the first time her new boyfriend is mentioned, because PLS had been caught on her husband's lie. I suspect the cocaine was not actually given to her, because as we learn more about PLS, the more it seemed that she was probably on drugs the entire time we knew her. My GM tried to find out more from the bar. But by the time we asked, a few weeks later, all that anyone really knew was that she had been making some other patrons uncomfortable. My friends, this is the beginning of PLS, and how two weeks of her nearly caused a riot among staff and guests against the GM in order to get her out of our hair. A long story that takes time to unravel, and a word count that Reddit probably won't allow. I hoped I could maybe write it all out in one post. But as soon as I got going, I realized the saga of PLS is long and convoluted. I hope that the next installments will not be nearly this long, but it is important to lay the foundation of how this person came to be easily my least favorite guest. Our final post for the day comes from Mother of a Wild Thing. But I'm a shiny rewards member and I checked in on mobile. It never fails that we have guests show up wanting to check in hella early in the morning following a sold out night. We don't charge for early check in and are always happy to accommodate an early check in if we have a room available. Most people will call before they arrive for an early check in and if they don't call first, they are reasonable and understand why we can't check them in yet. We were fully booked on both Thursday and Friday nights due to graduations at the local university which meant we were unable to offer much of an early check-in, if at all, to anyone, member or not. With that being said, let me regale you with the story of a phone call I had to take on Friday. M equals me and AG is awful guest. So my front desk associate took a call on Friday morning. After about 10 minutes, she puts the guest on hold and calls me up to the desk because the guest had requested a manager. Thank you for holding. This is mother of a wild thing. How can I help you? AG, I am a insert shiny rewards member level member and I checked in on the mobile app. I set my arrival for 9 a.m. and got a message back that I was checked in. When my wife arrived at 9 a.m., she was told by your front desk that she couldn't check in yet. We had a graduation to get to and she needed a place to change, but your app obviously lied to me because she couldn't check in. I understand your frustration and apologize that there was a misunderstanding with the app. The message that you received was simply confirming that you had checked into the mobile app. We were fully booked last night. Our checkout time is 12 p.m. and housekeeping does not begin cleaning rooms that have been checked out of until 9 a.m. We are always happy to offer early check-in, but regardless of membership level, this is an amenity that is always subject to availability. But I asked to check in at 9 a.m. and your app said I was checked in. Yes, sir. The app does allow you to request a check-in time, and after you check in on the mobile app, we get a message that you've done so. While you get a message confirming you've checked in on the mobile app. This doesn't automatically check you in our system, though. When we have a room ready, you receive a message letting you know that your room is ready and available for check-in. Sidebar. I've downloaded this app and went through the reservation, check-in, and check-out process in order to see exactly what a guest sees when they do the same. The messages that the guests receive are clear and offer instructions on what to expect next, including that they will receive a message when the room is ready and they can actually check in. 
obviously I'm involved in a complete racket with this app. I can't believe you all would allow me to check in on the app and then deny me the room that I checked into. Unfortunately, we as a property do not have direct control over the app or the wording of the messages, since that is a branded app, not an app specifically for our property. But I would be happy to contact, brand, and let them know about this misunderstanding to see if they might consider altering their wording in the future. Well, your front desk person was rude to my wife too. I'm so sorry to hear that. I will address that with that employee immediately. Is there anything else I can do to help you with this situation? Sidebar. Y'all, the front desk associate he was referring to is the sweetest person to guests. I've never had a complaint about her being rude. This guy didn't get what he wanted and decided to try to burn the person that denied it to him. Not going to work, a-hole. I don't want anything free. I wanted my wife to be able to check in at 9am. Again, I apologize that we weren't able to accommodate that request with this stay. I hope you all enjoyed your graduation celebrations. Please let me know if there's anything else I can help you with while you're staying with us. Fine. Bye. Click. Maybe one day people like this will pull their head out of their rear end and realize that the world doesn't revolve around them. Maybe. Getting kind of hopeful there, OP. Getting a little hopeful. Well, alright my dashing dudes, I believe that that is enough for r slash tales from the front desk today. So, that's where we're going to leave it. If you like the stories, I'll link them down in the description below as always. And if you like the video, feel free to subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below with what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who has subscribed in the past few months. I cannot thank y'all enough. Also, if you want to stay in contact with me and all the other subscribers, go ahead. There's a link to my Discord server down in the description below. You can comment with me, you can tag me, you can ask me questions and suggest things. We have meme chats, we have regular chats, and we have quote chats to where you can post your favorite quotes from everything. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.